Hello everybody, this video is about a continuation to make a function generator for your hobby electronics lab and a good occasion to try to understand some key secrets based on operation amplifiers. In the previous episode we have seen uh, the wave shaper that uh, transformed the triangular waveform coming from the voltage controlled oscillator into a sine wave. Uh, the wave shaper is sensitive to the amplitude of the uh, input signal that may cause distortion. To prevent this problem, another stage should be put in between, and that is the circuit we are going to see today. To keep the amplitude stable, the circuit we need is an automatic gain control. And basically, it's kind of voltage controlled amplifier where the control voltage is the very same input signal averaged. So let's start giving a look at the variable gain amplifier. There are several ways to make uh, a variable gain amplifier or a voltage controlled amplifier. However, for the sake of simplicity and to keep the components count low, I'm gonna to avoid transconductance amplifiers and uh, sticking with the, the familiar uh, operation amplifier. The gain of an inverting operation amplifier is given by the ratio between the um, feedback resistor over the input resistor. And um, so to, to change the gain, what we need is a variable feedback resistor. A solution that I like is to use uh, an opto resistor or uh, a light dependent resistor. The photoresistor that is in it, uh, it works very well and linearly with the AC signal and it has a very low distortion and noise. And it, if you have troubles in finding this component, it is really easy to make one and it is what I've made. The ingredients are a small chunk of aluminum tube or plastic tube, uh, a 3 mm LED, and a VT900 photoresistor from Perkin Elmer. The LED and the photoresistor are placed inside the tube facing each other and kept almost in contact. Then some epoxy resin loaded with the grey cement as a thickener and to make it the resin opaque is applied to the extremities to seal the two basic components. Et voilà! The optoresistor is ready to be used. Of course, some care is required not to smell the resin while soldering the part on the printer's circuit board. Of course, you can use other solution to keep the LED and the photoresistor in place, such as a heat shrinking tube. So this is the circuit. Uh, the input capacitor is um, has the function to decouple the, the C component from the input and it is quite large to accommodate the uh, lowest frequencies. The gain of the uh, operation amplifier is given by the ratio between the uh, re feedback resistor over the uh, input resistor and the, uh, and the feedback resistor is uh, uh, dependent by the uh, photoresistor that is uh, VT900 that is lit through this LID which is a, a, a red uh, LID, uh, three millimeter, and um, and uh, and it is uh, and this resistor limits the current uh, that flows through the uh, LIDs uh, and through this uh, transistor. So what's going on here? Uh, when the uh, signal is applied to the input, and um, only the uh, positive uh, the positive side of the of this signal uh, is uh, passed through this uh, diode. Uh, sorry, of course uh, I'm referring this to the output because the output is reversed uh, in the respect to the input. Mm, and uh, and this capacitor has the function to uh, to level this uh, this peak, the, these peaks and this. Um, uh, because without this capacitor here, we would have uh, something like this. Uh -huh. Because we have cut the negative. Uh, but with the capacitor, uh, this will be levered like this. 
actually we, here we have just this this line a continuous line that is dependent by the amplitude of the output signal that in turn depends by the gain of the operation amplifier given by the ratio between RF over RI and RF is given in turn by the light that uh, reaches the VT900 photoresistor. So the transistor uh, drives the current through the LID uh, of the optoresistor uh, and this current will be proportional to uh, the amplitude of the output signal and uh, therefore the more the amplitude the more the LID uh, will shine light uh, the more the photoresistor will lower its resistance uh, making the amplifier to reduce the gain. Uh, the whole thing uh, will find its equilibrium at a given gain that makes the output uh, amplitude constant almost <laughs> because there is of course uh, some, some error. This is a very simple circuit so some non-linearity exists uh, because the transistor uh, and the use of just a single operation amplifier. So this is the input and this is the output. Uh, the input uh, is now at attenuated uh, to have 2.280 uh, millivolt and the output is uh, 2.40, 2.5 uh, volt peak to peak. And um, when I change the gain, the, the attenuation, in inputs now I have a 3.67 3.64 volt uh, 2.7 volt uh, in um, in input and 4.2 volts in output peak to peak and this is the, um, the so the gain is um, about uh, 18 dB and um, the the error is about uh, because this is the Minimum uh, between the minimum and the maximum, we have uh, an error of um, uh, amplitude in output, uh, which is about uh, 4.5 dB. The circuit has a dynamic gain of 18 dB and an output error of 4.5 dB over 22 dB of input variation. So the, the ratio the ratio is 80 percent uh, to the target level. Another possible circuit uh, is uh, this, uh, it's more precise, but as you can see uh, it uses a lot more components. And uh, it, it, its key component is this, it is a JFET uh, that with this resistor uh, makes a voltage divider and, um, and, uh, and the signal is decoupled and amplified by this uh, stage here. And then uh, here we have again the rectifier and the uh, capacitor to leveling to level the signal the rectified signal proportional to the amplitude and uh, and uh, and uh, here we have uh, um, a part of the signal uh, the original signal is mixed is added together and this is uh, another amplifier and um, the other signal is used to compensate to linearize the JFET and uh, because this inverted signal we have another stage here that must invert again I didn't test this circuit but uh, uh, theoretically this is how it would work it's another possible circuit <laughs> even more complex um, and uh, maybe with a little bit more distortion um, it has uh, the input signal comes uh, here and uh, here we have uh, a differential input uh, um, that uh, that is made with these two transistors uh, that is transferred to this uh, uh, operation amplifier that uh, sums the sh signal and differential and gives the output and um, the the signal in this case there is, is rectified and uh, the negative part is kept and delivered and, the and this voltage uh, uh, proportional with the amplitude is summed to this uh, positive voltage 
uh, that set the the point uh, of work of these two transistors so this is must be adjusted for, of course and um, and because this turn these two transistors uh, will vary their gain by changing the uh, current that flow through the emitter of the, the this emitter that is mirrored by this uh, other emitter again i didn't test this uh, maybe i have made some mistakes i don't know why the opto resistor based automatic gain control we've seen tested in this video is not super precise nor that fast in amplitude response it offers the advantage of simplicity, very low distortion and noise. Strike capacitance in uh, the photoresistor may lead to bandwidth limitation, but with the VT900 the circuit proven to offer a good response up to 500 kHz with very little attenuation, well below 3 dB. It can be used to make an audio compressor or other applications where very precise gain control is not important or where the input dynamic range is limited. Okay, for now that's all folks. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.